Greetings to all. A warm welcome to all of you. And a special greeting to all the women who will listen to this one day a prayer with women of the Bible. My dear ones, you are loved. Today I'm giving you the witnessing woman. And I will give you some examples witnessing from the author. And it's very special. And it will give you the inspiration to think about it and to do something with it. This is your Pastor Yeti. There is a book that the author is mentioned, and I will give you the title. The name of the author is Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages. It has revolutionized many of our ideas of emotional love. He encompasses love into five areas of interpretation through acts of service, receiving gifts, touch, quality time, and affirmation of words. I believe we witness to those closest to us with these love languages but witness to those outside the faith or strangers with acts of kindness. There are five individuals in my home, and this is now the author who gives examples with different personalities and diverse interpretations of love. In regards to Mr. Chapman's book, he suggests to discover another person, person's individual love language. One must intentionally observe the way they express love to others and what they may request from their significant other. Each person, it's the author again, in my family has one of these five categories. Tommy is physical touch. Nicholas is words of affirmation. Maddie is quality time. Matthew is gift giving. And I am acts of service. She goes on, witnessing the love of Christ in our family, as we are all believers, requires a heart to serve as each person interprets love differently. The giving of love has to be bestowed the way the person understands. Uh, She's giving now an example. For example, my daughter's language is quality time. The more time we can spend with her alone, talking and encouraging, Maddie feels loved. If we take time to watch her practice gymnastics, listen to her while she explains new skills achieves in class, and encourage her during competition, our daughter shines bright. Nicholas spends time with Tommy daily at the gym. Tommy affirms Nicholas' hard work with words of encouragement and praise. We homeschool our children. 
Nicholas learns well when I compliment him on his homework or his understanding of a new concept. The moment my voice raises in criticism or disapproval, he will literally shrink before your eyes and shut down mentally. Our smallest, most enthusiastic son, Matthew, is a gift giver. He enjoys an understatement, receiving gifts, toys, and anything he could play with from paper to stuffed animals to electronics and just plain stuff. Matthew will ruse or transform any toy to satisfy his Im imagine imaginative mind. His little heart is also a giver. He enjoys making, drawing, buying, and giving gifts, anything to make a person smile. Tommy's love language is physical touch. He is a hugger and toucher. All of the children can wrestle, lay on, crawl, and hang off my husband. Each of the children have lain with us in bed, snuggling close to their father who scoops them up and willing cuddles, no matter how old they are. Tommy enjoys physical touch from the moment he wakes to the moment he falls asleep, from the children and from his wife. There is never enough hugs or touch from him to receive. He enjoys giving his love and enjoys receiving love from his family. Finally, and this is the author, finally I enjoy servicing. I serve my family, I serve the church, and I serve in the community. I love my family by homeschooling, cleaning, cooking, praying, driving, and attending everything I can for them. I try to make their fa favorite meals, take them to friends' homes, encourage them in sporting events, play games, and homeschool them with as much patience as I can. I text them, telling them I love them, hug and love them, but also charge them with chores and household work, homework, and responsibilities. Witnessing to your family and intentionally loving them the way each personalizes is special. But how do we witness the love of Christ to unbelievers and those around us? So I believe through acts of kindness how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with great power and he went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the evil because God was with him. Write the scripture down. It's, you find it in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. Throughout my walk as a Christian, God has put on my heart to love others. I have tried to teach my children to do the same through acts of kindness. Our neighbor's son committed suicide a few years ago. The Lord put on my heart to give her a boutique of flowers on Mother's Day, letting her know we were thinking of her. Every Mother's Day since, my children have taken a beautiful arrangement of flowers to this woman. One year she came to my house offering a basket of our favorite fruit. When she saw me and I her, we broke down and cried together. She told me, you have to stop. I respond, I cannot. It is something God has asked me to do. My prayer is it has witnessed to her God's love for those suffering. A few other acts of kindness the Lord pressed on my heart were paying the toll for the person behind us on the highways, taking cookies to the military recruiting stations saying thank you for their service, 
taking pastries to the fire department and police stations, going to the nursing home weekly to see the elderly we called grandparents, leaving a bag of cookies in the mailbox for the mail carrier, handing bags of cookies to the sanitation workers, buying lunch, coffee for someone. Tommy is a generous giver. The Lord has pressed on his heart to pay monthly mortgage for people who were struggling, tickets to sporting events or entertainment venues, offering his real tour service for free, or helping those who are having financial difficulties with a little extra cash. These are just a few ways the Lord has asked us to witness to love of Christ to people who may not know Him. My dear ones, my prayer is that this day we open your heart and planted a seed to show the love of Christ to, to those around you, whether your immediate family, those who work for you, or those who pass by you every day. Ask the Lord how you may be a blessing to them. Ask the Lord to show you different ways to witness His love and draw people closer to Him. In a world that has become very selfish, I promise your act of kindness and witnessing Christ's love will be a breath of fresh air to someone's spirit. Let us pray and confess the word of living God. Jehovah Elohim, the Lord is God. Show me how to witness to those around me. You have placed people in my life for a reason, and my heart's desire is to minister life into their spirits. I know you will give me the words to speak, the testimony to share, and the word of God to penetrate their spirits. Father, I desire to educate myself with the word and commentaries to give an answer to anyone who asks about my faith. But in your heart set Christ apart as wholly acknowledging Him, giving Him first place in your lives as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope and confidence assuring elicited by faith that is within you. Yet do it with the gentleness and respect. Place in my hands apologetic books, resources, and classes to help me gently and respectfully witness to those in my family, outside my family, friends, and unbelievers. Show me how to witness to all those in my path. I pray all this with the desire of my heart in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. There is a very beautiful example how we can be that giver to be attached by the talents that we have, that our partners have, our children, our grandchildren, our friends. I believe very strongly that is the way you focus and you really want to be that person in your own character, giving it to Christ, knowing what he has given you in your talents and work with that to see how you can witness to those around you and to those who don't believe. I believe that if you really, really, really open your heart for that, that God will reveal, that God will use you, But you need to do something. You have to open your heart for that. 
and you can pray over that, you can pray years over that, but I believe that prayer is a word that is action. You cannot stay on your stay on your knees, if I may say so, for the whole day and don't put your feet in action. So it works both ways. I will encourage you if you listen very carefully to this very interesting meditation, please take some steps. Because this world is very selfish. But let us not be part of that. Even we are still in this world. We have a mission. We have a call. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. May the Lord fill your hearts with the desires and the gifts that He already gave you to be productive. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye.